On today's episode, we're gonna get this Coyote engine and trans mounted in this 1979 Ford Bronco. So if you've been watching this build, you know that this is only in the mock-up stage. We pulled the truck apart, we got this stuck in there, and there are several things in the way. I want this engine in further so that I can have more room in the front of it. Right now it's sitting on the factory coyote mounts that are in there. Well, it's more or less setting on blocks of wood, but the coyote mounts have to come out. Um, I'm gonna pick this whole engine up, pull it out, take those mounts out, trim some of the frame, um, the old engine mounts out of the way, and we're gonna offer it back up. This will probably go in several times. I should have taken these off before I dropped this engine down in a hole. Matter of fact, I know I should have, but uh, yeah, whatever. I just like making things extra difficult for myself because it keeps things interesting or something. And of course the battery tool has no torque, so it won't pull them out. So it's a little bit at a time. It's a pain in my butt. It's my own fault there. Remind me to take these off first. So yeah, I mean, that's about where I want it. Even that height, it's just pitched down on the tail. I gotta get that j trans jack under there and raise the rear of it. And then I can set a couple of blocks and then I'll show you the motor mounts that I have because they are really cool. We were out riding our BMX bicycles at the skate park and I followed a buddy uh, across an obstacle. And uh, long story short, I got hit in the chest with a two by 12. <laughs> um, but I'm fine, it's just bruised ribs, which I've had. I, I, it's gotta be several dozen times at this point in my life. I knew right away they were broke, but let's just say, we're not going riding tonight. Crawling in and out of here is a bit of a task. But that's all right. There was this one old guy that was here, and uh, he, he said, man, I really want to keep doing stuff, but I'm old and I can't really move that good. I said, dude, just do exactly what you do and just do it a little slower. That's all, just go slower. It's not a problem. It's starting to look pretty good under here. If I can get away with not modifying that trans tunnel, I'm gonna be super pumped. Looks like I even have room for my drive shaft. Huh. I know I got the back one. I ain't too worried about that. Leave a little room for play. All right, let's just let that, oh. <laughs> let's let that do what it does. I like that. I really, really do. Yeah, there's room for everything here. I like it a lot. Let's uh, get it to stay that way, shall we? Yeah, there's even room to change your oil and change your alternator. That'll be a first. <laughs> so I've got the engine about where I want it. And I feel like I could probably get this further in. But if I do that, I'm gonna have a tendency to wanna drop this. So that means that the oil filter would be below this piece of steel and then you'd never change the oil. And uh, nah, we can't do that. <laughs> I'll get a little more room out of that because it's right, as we like to say for Michigan, right up again you. Um, so I'll get a little more room out of that. There's room for the AC lines, that's no problem. Trans cooler lines, oil cooler lines, still plenty of room in between there and there so that you can get the radiator and everything installed later. But let's go underneath and I'll show you a couple challenges that I'm gonna face. One thing, 
one of the challenges. Everything you see here is filthy and it's all got to come apart. But not right now. First things first. Motor first. Let's go. Here we are underneath the front axle. And as you can see, the oil pan, it's close to the front axle differential, but not so close that it's going to hit. And keep in mind, we're going to lift this. So there's going to be more room in between that and that. Now, over here, if you look up, there's your passenger side exhaust manifold. And there's plenty of room to bring that back through here. Because if you look up there, you see the back of your AC compressor, and then there's some holes up here, which is where the mount needs to go. And I'll get the mount on and extend it down but you see the side of the frame there where that's cut? That's all filthy and it needs to be a flat plate to accept the receiving ears of the motor mount. And until I get that, I can't set this engine down. Let's go take a look at the other side and I'll show you a couple things over there. So there's the bottom of your oil pan and you can see it clears, so we're not worried about that right now. But if you see over there, like right there, that side of the frame, we have to duplicate the flat plate and the ears and that is saturated with grease. So there's gonna be several hours involved in that. If you look up, there's your exhaust manifold and that's fine, plenty of room to come back through here. But the big kicker is also coming through this same spot is gonna be a drive shaft and an exhaust pipe coming right through here. Now I can get rid of this, and I will cut that down. That'll give me some more room for the exhaust, but still a tight fit. So there's quite a bit of time in just doing this, and let me get to it so I can get this mounted. But now that I know what's going on, I can pull this whole engine out clean that up, get the flat plates on. I'll make a center line mark. Yeah, all kinds of thought type stuff happening right now. Look at the size of this thing. I think it's like six feet long, I'm not sure. But, uh, but I have the center line marks of where I want the motor mount uh, surface to be cleaned and welded flat. So I can deal with that. Um, I got the one over here. This one is marked where I want it. They're actually staggered on the Coyote engine. They're not in line, they're like that. But that's okay. I see where I can do it here. I'm gonna remove a couple bolts, grind it all clean and flat, weld a plate over it, and put the bolts back in. So that'll be as strong as ever. Same on this side. But let me get this thing out of here. Yeah, yeah. All right, I think we're about clear. And now we'll get started on these. Same here. It's caked with oil and grease, but all that's got to come out. A lot of prep. Let me get to getting. comes off but I have to get the engine mounted first so I've cleaned everything up I set the vacuum a little bit out of there because this truck must have been underwater at one time in its life the whole inside of the C channel the box section of the frame is just packed with mud and I've been digging it out for a couple days 
But uh, anyways, I wanted to show you these mounts. These are the rubber insulators and the bolts. And then these, these are the mounts. And they are beautifully made, let me tell you. They're laser cut and they're welded TIG to perfection. And they're not real cheap, but we got them because they fit this engine. This fits all the modular Ford engines. And uh, you can get these welded or unwelded in case you wanted to position any of this in a different spot. I chose this because I knew I could get those on the block. Uh, along with the insulators and the bolts, you also get these ears, these weld on ears. So wherever I end up, let's say this is in there, wherever I end up, I can weld these on to grab these mounts and they'll hold this frame up and then I can box and plate it in later. But it's just really easy to use. And I wish I would have discovered those sooner, but they're made by a company in Canada. I, I have no affiliation with them. They're called Hortons, like Tim Horton, but uh, it's Paul Horton. And they've been around doing hot rod stuff for years. They make, it's beautiful stuff. It really is. As you can see, there's the mount, and uh, these are the cardboard pieces that I made, which actually will go right there and right there once I trim them up and I'll weld them, and then I'll box them in. And then we'll do the exact same thing on this side. These ones are gonna be shaped a little different. I don't know if you can see that in there. There we go. A little different because these these are going to get altered so that they weld to the side right there and I might run them like that I don't know yet but they're going to get altered and boxed in of course they'll either be in there like this or like this and I may even do them like that I'm not sure yet well, that's why I made these. I'm gonna trim these until I get it perfect, mark it, then I'm gonna lift this up, weld them on, and when I lower it in, I'll be able to bolt it together. Give you a better idea of what I was talking about there. And we'll just duplicate that and make it out of steel. And then of course box it in, you know. The patterns are made, so I just gotta pull those out, recreate them in steel, and then tack them on and I can pull the whole engine back out and finish welding them. Then we don't need the cherry picker anymore. Hooray! All right. So now those mounts under there get bolted to that and that. 
so I'm reasonably content with that. And what do you do? What's Lucky Costa say? Paint it black and hit the track. sub-zero temperatures will freeze your skin and if you ever forget <laughs> it reminds you pretty quick so uh, let me show you how those motor mounts turned out parts have started to arrive for the suspension and the brakes uh, I still need body mount parts and we're also going to take not only the body off and set it on the ground, but we're going to get the axles out from under it. And uh, we're basically going to occupy all three bays in here with this particular project. Um, we're waiting on a bunch of stuff to come in for it. And of course, I still have the transmission mount to install where it's going to set the motor a little closer to level. Because right now, it's just kind of pointing down south, if you know what I mean. So that's where we're going to have to leave this particular build for right now. Um, stay tuned to the channel, make sure you follow along, leave your notifications on, whatever it is you need to do to come back and watch this develop. Because the axles are going under it, the body's coming off, um, there's a lot of exciting things for 2023. There's talk of an RV that's going to be nomad outfitted for the Canadian wilderness. So as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.